Welcome to our lecture online. Here we have another interesting JE Advanced question. It deals with capacitors this time. Now, do you advise on this one because you could get the wrong answer if you don't go through the process completely first. So what they're doing here is we have a circuit with two capacitors, two batteries, three switches. We close each, each switch one at a time and leave it closed long enough for things to come to a final status, a final situation, so that there's no transient going on. We have a complete final situation each time we close a switch, then we let go, close the next switch, let go, close the third switch, let's go. And so the answer then, we have four possible answers, any one of them which could be correct or it could be a set of them being correct. Now obviously if you take a look at A and B, they cannot be correct at the same time, and if you look at C and D, they cannot be correct at the same time. So possibly one, possibly two, but not more of the answers should be correct. So let's read the, the question. In the circuit shown, there are two parallel plate capacitors, each of capacitance C. The switch S1 is pressed first to fully charge capacitor C1 and then released. Switch S2 is then pressed to charge capacitor C2. After some time, S2 is released and then S3 is pressed. After some time, which of those answers are correct? So let's go through the process and make sure you go through the entire process before you begin to answer some of these questions or you could have it wrong. All right, first of all, we're going to close switch S1. So now switch S1 is in this position, so this battery will then charge this capacitor. Now keep in mind that by definition the capacitance is equal to the charge on the capacitor divided by the voltage that puts that charge onto the capacitor. So that means that Q, the charge is equal to C times V, the capacitance times the voltage driving that charge. Now in this case, the voltage driving this charge, when this switch is closed, is this voltage right here, so this becomes 2C V sub naught. And then the danger is you look at the answers and go, oh, A says the charge in the upper plate, upper plate capacitor is 2Z V as 2Z V0, and you might say that's the correct answer, but you have to go through the whole process first before you start answering the questions. But at this point, we now have, and I'm looking for my blue pen, which I can't find. Where do all my pens go? Ah, here's a blue pen. Let's see if that one works. Or maybe we should use a red pen. Let's try a red pen instead and see if that one works. All right, so what we have now is we have positive charge on this side which means we have negative charge on the bottom and so this charge currently is equal to 2CV0. All right now we open switch S1 so this is now open and now we close switch S2. Notice there's no batteries connected to this circuit the middle part of the circuit but these two capacitors are now connected they have equal capacitance C that means that the charge is going to equally divide itself over the two capacitors so a couple of these charges will then move over here and settle on this capacitor which means that a couple of the negative charges also will, will move and settle onto this capacitor right there so now what happened was that the charge on C1 has now gone from 2CV0 to 1CV0. So now at this point, this is now being changed to 1CV0. That's on charge 1. And then you can also say that charge 2 is also 1CV0. Half of the initial charge that was on here moved on to here, equally divided. But we're still not done. Because now what happens is switch S2 opens up and now S3 closes. Now when this charge, when this switch opens up, notice that completely isolates capacitor C1. No charge movement can happen after that because there's no complete circuit, which means that C1 stays in this condition. Now we could potentially answer this question because now we realize that Q1 is now 1CV0, which is answer B, so answer B is now correct. What happens further now that we close S3, notice now this battery is driving charges to the circuit, but notice that this is the positive side on this battery, where over here the positive side was on this side. 
which means that current will flow in this direction and will continue to do so until the voltage difference across this capacitor equals the voltage difference across the battery. Which means that now charge will be driven in this direction, so the current will flow in this direction. That means this side will fill up a charge, positive charge on this side, and will have negative charge on this side. There's my blue color here, negative, all right. Now notice how much charge will be collected here. Again, we use the same equation. We can say that Q2 is equal to the capacitance of Q2 times the voltage that drives a charge onto the capacitor. In this case, the voltage is V sub naught, so it'll be C V sub naught. However, it'll be on the bottom side of the capacitor. The top side of the capacitor will be the negative C V naught. And if we take a look at the C and D answers, you notice that D has a negative CV because we're talking about the upper plate of the capacitor, which is now a negative charge, so D is the correct answer there. And that's how we determine that B and D are the two correct answers, A and C are not. And notice, if you start answering a question at the beginning, after you close switch S1, and you have two CV0 charge on this capacitor, you might be tempted to call A a correct answer, but no, we have to wait until we've gone through the whole process before you start answering the questions. And that is how it's done.